would look at payback method and net present value. First, let me give you a scenario. Imagine that your, say your sister, wants to borrow money from you. Also, your brother wants to borrow money from you. And you have 10000 available to lend. But you can only lend this $10,000 to either your sister or your brother. Let's look at this scenario. Say scenario A and scenario B. Scenario A, let that be, for instance, say your sister. So this is your sister. Yeah? And this is, say, your brother. Now, they want to borrow money from you. So it's your family. Okay? Remember, important thing is your family. Your sister says that after the end of year one, she will give you $1,000. At the end of year two, she'll give you 3000 back. At the end of year three, 4000 back. At the en end of year four, 5000 back. Now, your brother says, well, I will give you 4000 back in year one, 4000 back in year two, 2,000 back in year 3 and 2,000 back in year 4. The question that you have is you can only lend to one person. Who would you lend to? This is for you to think. Okay. Even to make it more interesting, let's say instead of year, for the purpose of this scenario, let's consider week. We're going to change the scenario up a little bit. Let's say a week. We go again. Your brother wants to, you have 10000 to lend. So let's say you have $10,000 to lend. I'm going to use the word lend here. I'm going to put in brackets invest. So you have 10000 to lend slash invest. At the end of week one, your sister says she's going to give you 1000 back. At the end of week two, 3000 back. At the end of year, sorry, at the end of week three, 4000 back. At the end of week four, 5000 Your brother says 4000 4000 2000 2000 Question is, who would you lend to? Yeah. Now, in one case, when you add this value up, you find that this gives you a total of 13,000. And this gives you a total of 12,000. Some may say, let me lend to your sister. Some will say, let me lend to your brother. But if you ever lend money to your family, you realize that the goal in mind is get your money back as soon as possible. That is your main goal when you lend to family. You want to get your money back fast. At the end of week one, your sister gave you a thousand, but your brother gave you four. At the end of week two, so let's do now another t let's do now another column where it says cumulative. Let's, I'm going to use the word cash flow. Cumulative cash flow means the total that you have got back. At the end of week one, your sister gave you back a thousand. By the end of week two, how much did you get back? A thousand from here and three thousand here. Four thousand. At the end of week three, you got four thousand and four. 8,000 and at the end of week 4 you got your 13 fine that is the scenario for sister let us look now at the scenario for brother oh 
Okay, now in the case of your brother, you got 4,000 back, then you got 8,000 back, and then you got 10,000 back, then you got 12,000 back. At the end of week one, your brother collected, gave you back four. Your sister gave you back one. So what is happening here? At the end of week two now, you've got majority of your money back by the end of week two. So if your brother decides, well, I'm not giving you any more money back, at least you've got majority back. If your sister tells you at this part, point, well, I can't really pay you back anymore, then what's going to happen is you're still out 6,000. In this case, you collected back majority. Let's look at week three. By the end of week three, you've collected back all your money from your brother, but with your sister, you still have money back. In cash flow, in, in payback method of um, investment, when evaluating investments based on payback method, your main concern is how fast will I get back my money? It does not care about cash flows after the period, after, the, after getting back your money. So you're not really concerned with how much money you make in total. You're just concerned with how fast you can get it back. In this case here, you got your money back in year three. And here, sorry, in week three. In this case here, you got it back somewhere between three, week three and week four. So, when you are looking at cash flow under the payback method, or when you're evaluating investments under the payback method, your main concern is how fast you get your money back. So what I will show you now is, in an example or in an exam question, what you would do to answer a question like this. Now, I'm going to just rub off this part here. Instead of sister here, I'm going to put, put back what we originally had. Um, I'll just take that part out. And we'll just continue the question based on what we had before. Okay, so we have here, year, and now let's say that this is cash flow, cash inflow. That means how much money you are getting back in. Now the original investment is 10,000. Now, this is your cumulative cash flow, so the cash flow is usually what is given to you in the exam. How much you have invested is also given to you. Now, where does 10,000 lie in this scenario? 10,000 lies somewhere in between here. So your payback period, you know, what, what we're trying to find out is your payback period. We know from this that we're getting paid back somewhere between three and four. To work out that exact fraction, we say, okay, we're getting paid back in three years. In this case here, 10,000 is here. So how much does it take to get from 8,000 to 10? It'll be eight, so be in this case here, the difference, which here is 2,000. So we payback period will equal three years and 2,000 over this whole period. You're trying to find out the fraction of the period. And that whole from 8,000 to 13,000 is five. So the fraction here is you got paid back in two and two fifth years. We work it out in terms of fractions. So again, we go again. We have our cash flows. We know that the, we have 10,000 to invest. We get the money back like this. 1,000 in year one, 3,000 in year two, 4,000 in year three, 5,000 in year four. Now, when I do my cumulative cash flow, it means at the end of year one, I got back 1,000. At the end of year two, the 1,000 plus 1,000 is 4,000. At the end of year three, 
4,000 plus the cumulative is the 8,000 and year 4, 5,000 plus 8 is 13. That's the cumulative cash flow. We invested $10,000. When did I get back my $10,000? I got back my $10,000 somewhere between year 3 and year 4. So we know that the payback period would be 3 years and some fraction. Now, I put the 10,000 because I know it's occurring sometime between the 8 and the 13. Now, when I put my 10,000 here, how much does it take to get from 8,000 to 10? It takes 2,000. Over the whole period, 5,000. So when I work out that fraction, my payback period is 3 years, 3 and 2 fifths years. And that gives me my payback period. What you do, you work out the payback period for each investment. The one with the smallest payback period is the one you choose. It means the one that you got back here, the money, the fastest. So when working out this in an exam, it would be good to set out the table, work out your cumulative cash flows, then work out your payback period. It's a very simple example. Thank you.